Good morning, my good people. It's Makeda Valletta, also known as the Renaissance Amazon. And I'm live on my IG page, copper underscore showgirl. I'm going to save it and repost it to my YouTube page, the Renaissance Amazon. Um, I have my mic on, so hopefully you can hear me. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me. And then my morning smoke with a nice lemony strain and drinking my morning tea. Please put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for those of you who, let me give a, a brief introduction. Let me stop, let me stop smoking my blunt, my morning blunt as I wait for you guys to come on. It's a great cerebral strain. Okay, you know I'll be talking fast and a lot. Okay, so in case you're unfamiliar with me, I am a native New Yorker from Harlem World, Sugar Hill to be exact. Currently reside in Chicago as for the past almost eight years, but I'm back in New York every month. Um, I am, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. I am a serious hip hop fan um, and critic, okay? If you follow my work, you see I've done several videos over the years critiquing different aspects and things about hip hop. I've done videos like, why do people try to act like Foxy Brown doesn't exist, okay? Every time people talk about like the history of women in hip hop and they talk about Kim, Kim, Kim and and and, and how Kim put out this sexual hip hop and, and it's like, I was in high school during that time and I remember Kim and Foxy being contemporaries. And I don't know, I know different parts of the country listen to different things. I've realized that as I've lived in the Midwest and I've traveled to the West Coast and down South, everybody didn't listen to the same thing. But I could tell you New York, Foxy and Kim were both those girls at the same time. They were both with the raunchy um, sexual hip hop and they're both talented and we loved them both. Um, and so to me, to acknowledge Kim and to ignore Foxy is ridiculous. And if it really came down to it, I think Foxy is a better rapper anyway, but that's, but still they're both dope. I won't get too much into that analysis, but I've done, you know, uh, videos talking about just new female rap era. And if the female rappers talk about sex too much, sorry, somebody call me because that's all people can complain about. And, um, I always say, sorry, somebody keeps calling me. I always say it's better to make love and not war, right? So whereas the male rappers are always, you know, talking about popping somebody, okay, burying somebody, doing something, you know, it was always, or selling rocks, stuff that was completely destructive, okay? Um, people love to shame sex so much, right? But we're all sexual beings, right? And we all come from sex and we should have a good, healthy sex life, which does not include having people do things against their wills or putting things in baby oil and drinks to make people lose their consciousness and control over their body. Okay. And their memory and everything else. Okay. That is not cool. But I find it interesting that that is what has been going on behind the scenes in hip hop the whole time, but yet they're shunning, you know, women, female rappers now who are just rapping about what they like sexually. <sighs> God forbid a woman is twerking. Oh my God, booty cheeks are jiggling. Booty cheeks are jiggling. It's the worst thing ever. But yet all this hip hop, Biggie rapping about how he had to sell crack to feed his daughter. No, okay. Crack dealers, I'm going to say this over and over again. Crack dealers destroyed the hood in every city. Okay. It wasn't the strippers. Okay. If anything, the strippers brought peace. All right. Because I say, if all the strip clubs close today, I will bet anybody money that the crime rates will go up tomorrow. If all of the, the fact that we have social media now and, you know, guys can get on Instagram and switch, switch, switch to the world's most exotic woman, there's thousands of them. You can fall into a pretty woman uh, rabbit hole on Instagram. Okay. Um, so the fact that you can do all that so easily now, if all of that went away tomorrow, 
if you know you had no access to that i think a lot more men would be a lot more agitated okay i'm just saying so when people try to compare you know a stripper or um a girl that is twerking which women do i've, I've made videos you know i am a dancer i studied um dances of the diaspora particularly black dances in the diaspora particularly in the americas and the congo okay so that's brazil that's colombia that's haiti that's cuba that's dominican republic that's puerto rico that's north america okay that's peru that's venezuela okay jamaica all of those countries have even trinidad even though i'm not a fan of soca music but it's like all of those countries have intense dances that involve the hips okay and black american uh twerking and bounce the the booty cheeks are doing a lot the hips aren't doing as much as you might find in like a haitian or a jamaican or a trinidadian or um uh, afro peruvian okay dance out but still we all have hip center dances okay and i've made videos talking about the healing properties behind those dances yet you have black people themselves sounding like the colonizers okay shaming black women because black women like to shake and gyrate it has nothing to do with men black women do that when it's just black women around and nobody else okay it's fun and it's healing and i've made videos talking about that but this whole you know one of the things that i say that i really love about hip-hop now is um i like this this rap girl era i like hearing more female voices i like women talking talking they shit i like that because we've had to hear men talk their shit and it's been destructive people say people say that the women they oh they can't get along they beef too much no these dudes okay i'm still seeing all the first of all dudes be talking about you know this toxic thing in hip-hop no snitch no snitch and then people also associate um uh talking a lot to be a feminine trait when really it's a masculine trait okay because every time somebody finds out who was having sex with who it's because a dude was running his mouth not a chick all these dudes online now who ex bodyguards ex this ex that they want to be talking they turn 50 and everybody wants to talk suge knight's doing interviews from jail they all got so much to say now they talking a lot okay and then they have all these beefs that i didn't even know all these people had all this drama behind the scenes okay those are the men where do we see women doing that where do we see a mass scale of female um rappers doing that to each other we don't okay and what we do see in this female rap girl era is a lot of females actually collaborating and getting along you know what i'm saying there's little beeps here and there but it doesn't compare at all to the men and there's a lot more collaboration okay so i love this 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 female rap era and back in the 90s all the female rappers the kims you know the the the, the 90s early 2000s all the 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 kims the foxies the um lauren hills um eve everybody had to be in a crew of dudes first okay they might have gone solo but they all had to come out in a crew of dudes now you know so it was still like this masculineness to women in hip-hop like you know girls wearing the baggy clothes that's that's you know black men now a lot of a lot of silly black men now want to call black women masculine well wearing a bunch of baggy boys clothes is masculine okay and then when uh we are like okay i'm going to step into my femininity now oh you're a hoe and there are problems so i mean most men don't like prudish women okay most men don't want to hang around a woman who's super prudish and uptight but then you are around a woman who's comfortable with her sexuality and it's a problem so that's why we tell women like don't define yourself and don't you know the way you are the way you what you do sexually none of that based on what you think a man thinks you know what i'm saying do it make sense to you okay because dudes you know men like to impose all kinds of retarded stuff on two women okay but getting back um to the point all right is that um i made a video back in 2021 about jaguar right um about jaguar right and it was a it's on my youtube page of renaissance amazon and it's called respect to the truth tellers i will repost it on my youtube page so if you're on instagram make sure you follow me on youtube the renaissance amazon um i'll repost it onto my wall or else you can just go find it but it's called respect to the truth tellers okay and in that video 
I that's when I, I really was listening to Jaguar write a lot and a lot of stuff she was saying. And she was the first one, okay, the first one to say that Diddy was a sex trafficker. And I remember how crazy that sounded when I first heard that. I was like, what? Like, you know, um, it sounded crazy. And look where we are now, right? And so in listening to her, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I believe everything she says, but I feel like I believe most of it. I feel like the vast majority of what she's saying is probably true. Now, the women, again, let's talk about the women who are super brave, okay? Because there's been, Jaguar Wright is not the only one saying the things that she's saying. You know, there are other people that have been saying things. You have, you know, um, um, uh, people like Orlando Brown. You have people like that dude from B2K, um, Raz B, who has been speaking about what happened with him and Chris Stokes. Now, what man, and Chris Stokes is his cousin. What man, if a man was violated by another man, no man wants to admit that. So I think that's why it's harder for people like Usher and, you know, Justin Bieber. And did you know that Bow Wow, did you know that Snoop Dogg had custody of Bow Wow at five or six years old and he lived with Snoop for a couple of years and didn't even see his mother? Do you know that? And did you know that Diddy had custody of Bow Wow at one time? And I wonder what, what went on with Jermaine Dupri and Bow Wow. Like, it, who, I didn't know Bow Wow got passed around. And the thing is, and in no disrespect, but I'm just saying, I'm just being blunt and real. Um, and Bow Wow seems to have issues with women. He's had so many domestic violence issues where he's been beating women. He has a lot of internal anger. So I definitely think something happened to Bow Wow. I do not like his energy at all. And um, you have in, in Usher, okay? Uh, P, this is another thing, okay? Talking about the double standard and his female um, rap era. You have Sexy Red, who said that she got chlamydia from, hold on, I have to sneeze. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you have Sexy Red, who said that she got chlamydia from the father of her child, okay? She said they were broken up, and they, you know, did, you know, he did whatever, she did whatever, then she got chlamydia from him, and that's what she says. People shame her like she is the nastiest, most disgusting person, not worthy of anything, right? But yet, now, number one, we have Easy E who passed away from AIDS, okay? So to me, I really believe that unless you're sharing needles, you're getting that from booty sex, okay? And I would not be surprised at all if Easy E was taken in a booty. I really wouldn't. And fuck Easy E and everybody in NWA, okay? Because when Dre beat the shit out of D Barnes, okay? When Dre did that, you can go look it up on YouTube. Easy E and other members of NWA went on MTV and they said she deserved it. And if they see her again, she's going to catch it again. And Dre beat the mess out of that woman. And Graped her, okay. So, and people put Dre on his pedestal. That aneurysm should have taken him out, okay. Should have taken him out. Now, Usher was given. Did he have custody of Usher? Now, we know something happened to Usher. Usher will never say that. Usher is going to grin and smile like he does to Beyonce. He never addresses anything, but unlike Beyonce, who does address the stuff in her music. Usher doesn't at all, but Usher bought Justin Bieber, you know, to Diddy. And if you look at that old footage, and there's plenty of people on YouTube who can show it, you know, the YouTube detectives are amazing, but there's plenty of footage of Bieber and, and Diddy, and you can see how uncomfortable Bieber was. You can tell that Diddy was something, he's done something, he's violated him too. So what, and then Usher had lawsuits a few years ago from women and men who said, that um, he gave them herpes, okay? Women and men sued Usher. And Usher settled those lawsuits. And then, and then, um, um, what should we call it? What am I trying to say? Oh yeah, so nobody, nobody is acting like Usher is disgusting, but they're doing that to Sexy Red who said, Sexy Red said, I got chlamydia from my father, the father of my child. And people look, oh, she's gross. She's just nasty. She's not worthy of love. But meanwhile, Usher is over here spreading herpes around the world. Okay. Usher is bringing little boys to Diddy to be violated. And 
people act like Usher's so great. I honestly have never been an Usher fan. I'm not going to say I don't like anything that he's done. I do like some of his music, um, some of it, but I've never been an Usher fan. Okay. I'm not one of those women that wants to go to the Usher concert and get serenaded by him. I've never felt like that about Usher. Okay. And Chris Brown, I used to think Chris Brown was more talented than Usher. And I used to be more of a Chris Brown fan. But, you know, even then, I wasn't really a Chris Brown. See, the thing is, I acknowledge that Chris Brown was talented, right? But I didn't like him for a long time either because it's not just the Rihanna thing. People keep talking about Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna. No, Chris Brown has had so many temper tantrums. I remember when he was in New York. I don't know if it was, I don't know what network it was, but he was on Times Square in the studio and he was being interviewed. And somebody asked him, they asked him about the Rihanna situation and he threw a tantrum and threw a chair out the window on Times Square. Now, if you've ever been in New York City, you know that there's always people walking out. There's always tons of people walking around downstairs in Times Square. You could have killed somebody throwing a chair out the window. Those type of temper tantrums are unacceptable. And you know what is one of the common denominators of all these celebrities? No daddy. Okay. Diddy had no daddy. Chris Brown had no daddy, or his daddy was beating his mother, but I think he really had a daddy, okay? Usher didn't have a daddy. Where was Justin Bieber's daddy, okay? Most of these dudes don't have dads, all right? Where was Bow Wow's dad, okay? His mother gave custody to Snoop at five. I'm going to say, and I'm just being honest, because it's like every man that I've been in a relationship with has daddy issues, okay? My dad was always there. Um, my dad was always in my life, always told me, I just got to pump my dad before I started this video. And if I call my dad right now, he's going to start telling me how much he loves me. Okay. My dad was there every single day of my life. Okay. And every man that I've been, so, so this, this whole narrative about, oh, the, you know, black family and the black, in my family, there were no fatherless uh, everybody in my family, the parents are married and they grew up with the mother and father on both sides. Okay. Of my family, that was the norm. Okay. There was no absent daddies anywhere on either side of my family. Okay. But all of the, 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 the black men that I've been in a relationship with, they got daddy issues. Okay. And I used to not want to say, oh, somebody's damaged or, you know, and I believe somebody can have daddy issues and do the work and get, you know, I used to think it was really just a, a female thing, but I see that how daddy issues affects men. And, um, yeah, no. Okay. You'd be looking up to the wrong people. You're lost. Okay. Girls or boys without daddies are lost. Okay. First I saw when I was in, or you don't hear, or if you, if you have a stepdad, and you don't heal your father wound, okay, you will be lost, all right? And it makes you follow the wrong shit, all right? So, um, Kanye, okay? Okay, Kanye. I don't think Kanye is innocent. Yes, Kanye has been saying a lot of truth, and Kanye has been calling a lot out. Kanye called out Diddy, yes. But at one point, Kanye was so obsessed with wanting to be a billionaire. I mean, he was so obsessed. Anybody who wants to be famous so bad, okay, and you want to be a billionaire so bad, people prey on you, okay? People prey on you, especially. I might, I might need to plug my phone up in a second. Yeah, especially um, this industry. And. Kanye was so obsessed with that, so obsessed with, you know, and so also no daddy, okay? So I'm telling you, like, now you have, you, you do have a few entertainers that had their dad by their side, like Beyonce. I don't, I don't understand what happened. I don't understand how she married Jay-Z. I don't understand that. I never understood that. From the time that Beyonce married Jay-Z, I was like, why? Okay, why him? I always found Jay-Z so unattractive. And it's not just his physical, it's his whole energy, okay? I have never found Jay-Z attractive. You want to talk about an attractive New York rapper with swag who could get it? You could talk about Nas. You could, especially back in the day, Nas, okay? Um, you could talk about um, um, 
LL Cool J. <laughs> you could talk about Method Man. Okay. Um, those are some swaggy New York rappers. All right. But Jay-Z, no. Okay. And so I never thought Jay-Z was a good person. Okay. I think that Beyonce genuinely was a good person at one point. Maybe, maybe, maybe she's not anymore. You know, there's a lot of accusations about her. Haven't seen any hardcore proof, but you know, um, she might've been more complicit. One of her, um, ex bodyguards came out and said that Jay-Z had her drugged up all the time. So I, I know that I haven't seen any proof about Beyonce, but it's like, I would like to believe, or I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm not someone who has a problem accepting the truth, but I would like to believe that like Jay-Z had her drugged up. So he had her doing things. Um, because I mean, I'm saying if she did do anything, cause I just never got bad energy from Beyonce. And I, and I think that in her work of art is her body of, of work is amazing. And that, I'm not going to get into that. I could do a whole nother video about that. I've done videos about certain things about that. Um, and I'll do that in another video. And I'm not saying that you have to be a fan of everything she does. Cause like, I recognize that Prince is very talented, but I'm not a Prince fan. Okay. Yeah. I like a few Prince songs, but I'm not a Prince fan, but I do recognize that Prince is very talented. It's just that his music is not really my thing. So, you know, you can acknowledge somebody's talent and not necessarily be a fan of all the work, like, like Bruno Mars. I'm not really a fan of his music, but I think he's super talented. He's a great performer, you know? Um, yeah, no Nas. Oh my God. Whew. I had the biggest crush on Nas in it back in the day. My goodness. Um, I mean, everything about him, like this is how the Nas's voice to this day still does it for me. Okay. Like the, the, the way he rhymes to me, Jay-Z is not, his is not, is not one of my favorite rappers. Okay. Jay-Z is not in my top 20. All right. <laughs> Jay-Z is like a scam artist to me. I never understood. I like reasonable doubt. Okay. That's my favorite Jay-Z album. I like reasonable doubt a lot, but like everything after that, there's a few songs here and there that was cool, but I feel like people were up Jay-Z's ass way too much. And I remember when Jay-Z and Nas got into, um, when Jay-Z and Nas got into that, that beef, okay, Ether, every time people would debate about whether Jay-Z or Nas is better, people would always bring up Jay-Z's business and, oh, he's worth this much and he made this much. I'm like, what does it have to do with being a good rapper and the music you're making? Being a, a billionaire or a, a whatever, super rich, a lot of times you're in bed with big business, okay? You're in bed with big business. That's not something I respect. Okay. You're in bed. Okay. You got to deal with Adidas. You got to deal with Nike. All those people use sweatshops. Okay. They use sweatshops in third world countries. Okay. And cause serious problems. They pay 25 cents. I love Nikes, but I'm just saying they pay 25 cents and charging you $200 for those sneakers. All right. So you're in bed with, you know, you're doing McDonald's commercials. Sorry. You, you, you're um, doing McDonald's commercials and you're doing Pepsi commercials and poison. Okay. And you're in bed with these companies, these big businesses. Okay. Who are never good. All right. So a lot of becoming a billionaire and that's how you're doing it. All right. So that doesn't impress me. All right. That's not, not, that's not what I respect. So anyhow, Getting to the title of the video where I wrote, the book is real. So we know this book with Kim Porter, right? And, you know, I'm going to say I have a lot of sources myself. There's a lot of different people I know who were around the entertainment industry heavy in different aspects in different cities between New York and Atlanta, for, mostly. Um, and a lot of these people in New York are all over because that's what New Yorkers do. But these are legendary figures, okay? Um, and some of them I haven't talked to about this, and some of them I have. Some of them I've heard things, different things over there. So I put it all together, right? And um, I was talking about Jaguar Wright, okay? But also there's a woman named Sloan Bella, okay? She, and it's interesting. So I, I'm, I'm just going to tell an, an interesting story. 
when Nipsey died, right? Um, Nipsey Hussle, Nipsey Hussle, I was not, um, I knew who he was when he uh, passed away, but barely, okay? I had just seen an interview with him on The Breakfast Club, um, and he was a Leo like me, like young Dolph, right? And I was just bothered by it. I was bothered by the the feeling of extreme hate. Okay, the feeling of somebody having because Leos, our strength is our our strength and our weakness is our heart. Okay, so that's the thing for Leos, and so we can be very big hearted and very loyal and really when we care when we care about the people we really care. And it bothered me that, and people can be jealous of us. People say, oh, Leo's like to be in the spotlight. No, a lot of times the spotlight just finds us. We're just natural leaders. None of the Leos I know are jumping in front of them like, oh, look at me. No, we're just being ourselves, and the spotlight likes to find us. Some Leos that we all know, Whitney Houston, okay? You have, um, I mean, okay, you have Angela Bassett, you have Megan Good. Um, then you got people like J-Lo, who I have mixed feelings about her right now. I'm not, you know, don't know she's the best person. Um, you have Obama and, um, Castro and, um, Marcus Garvey. Now, I'm not really a big Marcus Garvey fan, but that's a whole other conversation. But, you know, and not, and then you got people like Tory Lanez, who I can't stand. So not everybody that's a Leo is good. And a lot of times Leo men rub me the wrong way, but that's a whole other conversation. My whole point is, is that um, I think that to me with Nipsey, I just felt this extreme jealousy that took him, took out somebody who just was so good hearted, so naively good hearted. And that scares, that scared me and bothered me because I've had a lot of issues in my life. Okay. Only people very close to me know the type of, uh, the type of things that I've gone through in my life where people are really trying to destroy um, and it's been like a, you know, a constant battle and it's, and there are times I've dealt with people that I'm just thankful that those people were super broke because if they had the ability, the, the hatred was so deep that I felt like if they had the ability to get to me, I might not be living right now. You know what I'm saying? I've felt like that before. And so that just really bothered me, you know? And so around, I remember I was in Colombia when this happened and I remember somehow stumbling on YouTube tarot readers, okay, who read on celebrities. And I just was curious because I like to, I wasn't raised religious. I have, I was, I've studied a lot of different things. I don't claim any one thing. I like to study and observe, but I don't, I, and I, and I research and I research in many different ways. Okay. I research, my, my, my research is not just from books, even though I read a lot of books, but I research in many different ways and I have discernment about who it is I listen to, who my teachers are. Like, I have a top-notch brain, okay, and very good critical thinking skills. Very good critical thinking skills, which is why some people clash with me because they think I'm trying to be rude because I'm trying to get them to use their critical thinking skills, okay? So, that's the only way I know how to operate. Um, so, I remember back then, all of these, there was a number of, that's okay, I'm gonna listen to, you know, these readers and see who's right over time, right? So let's see, let's see how things play out. And I listened to several different people and they were all saying that Nipsey was killed by two men and a woman. Okay. And they kept saying it was, um, one or two of the men, it's definitely one of them. One or two of the men were very well known in the entertainment industry, somebody that we all knew. Okay. And at, back then I had no idea, like, and then maybe I thought, a puppy or Jay-Z or, you know, why would they do that? That's what I thought, right? Now, I listened to that. Um, from that point, I remember Kobe, okay? I was in Amsterdam when Kobe went down in the plane. And I wasn't even a Kobe fan, okay? But, of course, I knew who he was. And that made that 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 broke my heart, the fact that you go down in a, in a helicopter with your daughter, which I would never get in a helicopter ever. I don't trust them. They're not safe, Okay. But that's a whole other thing. Um, and I remember readers then saying something about him being involved in some things, having some type of deal, some type of business, some type of, like it was done intentionally. 
but it was something tied to something. And I also remember hearing, well, I'm not going to get, I won't go too into depth into all the things, right? Because I, I could talk a lot and how I'm piecing things together. Okay. And it was kind of weird. Like, you know, okay. Now, this woman, Sloan Bella, I, when, when Cassie's lawsuit came out, and I remember when Cassie, um, broke up with Diddy, I remember thinking to myself, like, that's so weird, because I know she knows so much weird stuff about him. I, that's the first thing I thought when they broke up, and I was, like, thinking, how is that going to work? Like, she, because it, it, it was always known that Diddy was into a lot of weird, you know, sexual crazy stuff, but weird, okay, stuff that he wouldn't want people to know. So that's always been known. And being from New York, I can't stand when I see people, like, funk flex, acting like, oh, well, we don't know... If it's guilty or, you know, I don't believe this. It's like, dude, you're from New York and you're in the entertainment industry. Let's be really be real, okay? Everybody knows that Diddy was a terrible person, okay? And I'm not talking about because he made them walk from Manhattan to Brooklyn to get cheesecake, okay? Because if you're from New York, you know that's not a big deal. That walk wasn't that far. Lower Manhattan to Brooklyn, New Yorkers can do that. <laughs> New Yorkers walked more than that or not 11. The rest of America is super lazy and I can't walk five blocks, okay? But, so it's not because of that, okay? But I have been hearing stories from people that work with Diddy in all kinds of capacities, and they all had nightmare stories, and I just knew he was not a good person, and I knew he was into really weird sexual stuff, okay? So I remember thinking that back then, like, how's that going to work? Okay, I remember a friend of mine telling me that, you know, some years prior that, you know, he was around a lot of people, and he told me, that Diddy um, was very controlling and abusive with Kim, like really controlling, like like he wouldn't even let her date anybody else, even though he's with other women. Um, and he told me about this guy, Shakir Stewart, who um, was in his early 30s and he supposedly committed suicide, but yet he was a rich, successful black man and he in the entertainment industry and he was dating Kim and he ended up not here, and they said it was suicide, and people were like, they always thought Diddy did that, okay? So, and that's believable when you see he blew up Kid Cudi's car, because Cassie was talking to him, you know what I'm saying? So, when people even say, oh, how come Cassie didn't say, first of all, people shouldn't be calling Cassie his girlfriend, because to me, that, that was not, they were not in a relationship. Cassie was being held hostage by this man. If you read the details in her lawsuit and how she signed a contract, she was signed in a contract with him. Okay, so he had her legally bound, and then he started to drug her. That baby oil, okay, this woman, Sloan Bella, this, this woman, this white woman, um, psychic seer who's on YouTube, okay, she did a video about, um, you know, apparently talking to Kim Porter, okay, this is like in June of 2023, okay, so this is before Cassie's lawsuit even came out. Sloan Bella said all of this was going to happen. Every single last thing. Okay. And she explained that Kim was writing a book and that Kim had, she said, Kim gave this to a few different people. And she said on a flash drive, and she said she gave it to people that nobody would ever expect. It's not her regular friends. And the woman talked about, Sloan Bella talked about a white man who was going to be coming out with some stuff coming out with this book, okay? You can go back and look at the video on YouTube. It's from, like, May or something of 2023. And this woman said that it was, she was going to hit the fan in November of 2023, but she said the date, it was a day before or a day after the date, she said. It was, on, it was a day after Kim's birthday, okay? She said, like, on Kim's birthday, and it happened the day after Kim's birthday was when Cassie's lawsuit came out. This woman said this. Okay. This woman has been a hundred percent accurate on all of it. All of it. Okay. She also said that, you know, Kim had discovered that there was ritualistic, um, ritualistic, and this is not like, just like sex. This is like ritualistic, you know, sexual rituals that are used to, that, that are done anally. Okay. And used to harness energy from, and this sounds crazy, okay? And this woman said that. She said, this sounds crazy, okay? But this is what Kim discovered that Diddy was involved with, and she felt like she could no longer 
even look at the man anymore. She knew he was wild. He might have been bisexual or gay or whatever. Um, but the kids, when she found out about that um, whole thing, she was just not okay with it. Okay? But... And this woman said that Kim was poisoned, okay? And she talks, she explains the type of stuff that was put in her, in her nose powder. And the coroner who did Kim's autopsy, who didn't say at first that it was pneumonia, okay? He ended up being, he's not here anymore, okay? So there's, and then, it's just so much, okay? So, to me, when I when I look at this woman made this video back in June of 2023, and every single thing she said down to the date, the way it played out, she even said, she even said, and this many, she said around Easter something else major is going to happen, and then that was the raid. Okay, then she said around that time, she said in um um she said what was it, in like six months, okay, that some more big stuff was and then what happened six months later okay um then he's in, arrested so this woman has been completely accurate and one of the things that she said about the baby oil is that it had ghb in it okay she said this when it, like the day that baby oil thing came out she said it wasn't just baby oil that ghb was in there too and it's being used to drug women when it, you put it on them now it's coming out okay in certain lawsuits where girls are saying that he squirted that at them. And then they started to lose control of their body. Okay? This woman said that. Okay? And so when you look at the interview from this guy, um, I think his name is Chris Todd or whoever that wrote this book, Kim Porter's Lost Words, he talks about, you know, in an interview where people, um, he talks about how he got the, the flash, you know, um, drive and the type of things that he had and everything that he is 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 saying you know it makes sense from everything that son bella said over a year ago okay kim didn't know who she could trust okay even a lot of her so-called friends you know diddy was watching everybody okay he had cameras everywhere how can you get away from somebody like him he got your phone tapped he stole Kim's laptops, okay? Her laptops got stolen when he found out she was even doing that. All right? So, I'm just saying. And I feel like a lot is going to come out, but I know, and some of it might break some of our hearts. But I see Kevin Hart being implicated, and it's interesting, because I never felt like Kevin Hart was funny, Okay? And Kevin Hart is the highest paid comedian in all of comedy. I'm like, how? Kevin Hart is the least funny black comedian. There's so many funny black comedians and Kevin Hart is not anywhere in the top fucking 50. So I'm like, how is he the highest paid comedian in history? How? And I've been saying, Kevin, if somebody sold their soul to the devil, it's Kevin Hart. Okay. So, and I remember when he had that accident on, um, the, in the Hollywood Hills I remember readers talking about that and saying it was connected to something sinister or some kind of sinister sex party. I remember hearing that readers on YouTube saying that. Okay. And so now, I'm, and all that sounded weird. Like, what do you mean? And look. Okay. So people like Rihanna. Okay. Rihanna is not talented. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, she was nice to look at, but she cannot sing. And she's a super lazy performer. Okay. She is not a good performer at all. So I'm like, if anybody, and, and, and then, then Jay-Z had her at like 15. So if anybody did something for fame, I definitely think she probably was involved. You know, like, it's just, but it's even people that, I mean, like, if Will and Jada just wanted to have sex parties, there's nothing wrong with having sex parties. Nothing wrong with having an open relationship and being a swinger. Nothing wrong with that. But when you are... You know, doing things to people against their will and all that, which is happening, it happens in the entertainment industry way more than people think, okay? And um, we're about to find out that a lot of people are about to find out, and it's going to be sports too. And when you look at the footage from, um, from Diddy's parties, you see Kobe, okay? 
Kobe had just had a meeting with Diddy like a month prior. And Nipsey, did you know that Diddy was producing Nipsey's album? Nipsey was on The Breakfast Club talking about um, um, Diddy, 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 Diddy. How honored he was to work with him. And Jay-Z was somehow involved in some of the business. I don't know if it was Adidas or something. Choke No Joke did a video explaining Jay-Z's connection to Nipsey business-wise. So both of them stood to actually make money from his death. And most people didn't know who Nipsey was before he died. And all of a sudden, he has a funeral, I mean, at um, the Staples Center. Like, there was something behind that, trust me. Um, you know, then after he died, you had Lauren London. Did he put out photos with Lauren London? I don't know if you remember this, but he posted photos on Instagram with him and Lauren London dressed up. And, like, they were going out somewhere, and he was looking at her like they were lovers. And everybody was like, what? Lauren London is messing with Diddy now? And then Lauren London got mad. I'm like, what was that about? What was that about? I'm going to put my microphone back on. Hold on. I have, I plugged this. Hold on. I plugged the phone up. I don't know where I put the, the, I don't know where I put the piece. Okay, I was going to turn my mic back on. Anyhow, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. And then, you know, stuff is coming out now about Steve Harvey. But can you please explain to me why Lori Harvey was dating Justin, his son, and then Diddy? What was Lori Harvey doing? To me, anybody that was like dating Diddy is suspect right now. Okay, and that includes Stupid Young Miami. I've never been a fan of the City Girls, okay? Not a fan of them. Those are female rappers that I think are trash, okay? Um, and Young Miami to me is just like, people were praising her. Oh, she's with Diddy. Oh, she, to me, I kept thinking, are people dumb? Like, who wants to be with Diddy? I'm sorry, in my whole long life, I have never come across a woman ever, okay, who has said, I'm attracted to Diddy. I want to get, I find him attract. Never. I've heard women say that about Lil Wayne, and I didn't understand that because Lil Wayne is not attractive to me, even though he's one of my favorite rappers, okay? Period, point blank. Lil Wayne is one of my favorite rappers, but definitely in my top five. Um, but, um, but I never found him attractive, but a lot of women did find Lil Wayne attractive. I've never heard a woman say they, they found Diddy attractive. And every woman that he t he's ever been with, he took by force. They were all with another man, and he went and terrorized a man and took them by force, took the damn kids, because honestly, I don't even know if Justin is is, is um, Diddy's kid. They say that kid is his bodyguard, Wolf's kid, okay, who Diddy got murked, all right? And Justin looks just like Wolf. Doesn't look like him. And people could say, well, if it wasn't his kid, why would he, you know, take care of him and go to court? Well, why did he do that with Quincy? <laughs> Quincy is not his kid. I'll be sure it was right there. He never left. What was that about? Okay. So Diddy was, he, you know, he would hold a lot of people hostage and was terrorizing people. And I always knew he was a terrible person. Always knew it. Always knew he was worse than Suge Knight. Always knew it. Okay. And, um, you know, New York has had a, a hip-hop crime unit for a long time. And there's a, a, a celebrity sex crimes unit. And so I'm just saying, um, I just feel like a lot of people, a lot of people, almost everybody, anybody who's looking a little suspect around here, okay, is guilty. Because a lot of people, you know who I never saw at Diddy Party? Candy Burris. I never saw a picture of Candy Burris at a Diddy Party. And I remember on Loving Hip Hop, I mean, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, what is her name? Phaedra made up a lie and told um, Portia, okay, that Candy was saying that she wanted to drug Portia and have sex with her in her sex dungeon. And I remember Candy was livid. 
off of that lie, okay? Um, and I remember Candy was shaking, and what she said was, I'm in an industry where people really do that, okay? And she was like, I, she said, I don't even drink at all. She doesn't drink or do any drugs because of that reason, because of the industry she's in, okay? Candy said that. I remember she was shaking. She was upset because people were calling her, you know, Pill Cosby or whatever because of this lie that Phaedra then admitted that she made up. And Phaedra was kicked off the show for years. So now when it's like we see what's really going on, and it's like I've been hearing for years that people were getting drugged and they would film you doing stuff. Um, I've heard that for years. But it's like way worse than anybody could have imagined. And when you think about it, I've never seen candy at any of those parties. And they want you to be addicted to some type of drug or um, be a drinker so that they have a way to get to you when they want to end your life. Okay? Like Whitney Houston. It's like, oh, she's already a drug addict. So if we go end her life right now, everybody would believe she just OD'd. when that's not what happened. Okay? Like, her life was intentionally ended. Um... And so they can do that with people like Rich Homie Kwan or, you know, like they can do that. Oh, this person's, why did Prince die of fentanyl poisoning? Okay. Prince was taking opioids for pain, which is why I'm always going to say cannabis is better because cannabis cannot kill you and it doesn't make you addicted to it either. Okay. It really helps to solve the pain issue without causing addiction or death. Okay. And opioids cause addiction and death. All right. But fentanyl should not have been in his opioids. It was Prince. Why would you? You're not getting street drugs. Why was there fentanyl in there? Well, did somebody do that on purpose? Because they just wanted to end his life? That's, that is the way that they get to you in the industry. So Candy knows that. So Candy said, I don't do any drugs. I don't smoke nothing. I don't drink nothing. I don't take no drugs. And I don't, she don't even be at them parties. But it's like everybody has these allegations, you know? Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, um, hold on a minute. I want to put my mic back on. See, I can't with all this technology. I want to put my mic back on, but I have a piece that goes into, okay. Um, I think uh, it's probably time for me to end this video anyway. I think I've made my point. Oh, also Jamie Foxx, okay? It's known that what happened to Jamie Foxx last year, Jamie Foxx said that somebody was trying to kill him. He said that, okay? Uh, that was said by the media. It was quoted over and over again. And we haven't seen Jamie Foxx ever since that happened, okay? He hasn't come out like that. And word on the street is that he did that to Jamie Foxx. Also, a woman named Erica Kennedy, I wrote a book called Bling that was talking about, you know, Diddy's life and the entertainment industry and all this stuff. And she used different names. That book became a New York Times bestseller. She ended up dead from pneumonia. All these people died from pneumonia. And Erica Kennedy was Kim's friend. Okay. So, um... All these people, if, 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 if Russell Simmons, okay, all these people are guilty. They're all guilty, all right? And uh, the reason why, you know, that guy, Eric Christod, who wrote, um, who put out the book, um, Kim's Lost Words, they asked him, why did you use the name Jamal T. Millwood? And um, because black people are trying to say he's a culture vulture, yada, yada, yada. And he said he was told to use that name because... Jamal Millwood was a name that Tupac was using. Um, and he said, you can look it up and you can find those references. So they told him to use that name to kind of be like, this is Tupac and Kim coming at you from the grave. Okay. And so yet yeah, you can look at the interviews with him. And, um, but to me, I just feel like the fact that this woman, Stone Bella said all of this, including about this man, she said all of it back in June, 2023. So on my YouTube channel, I will put links below to Sloan Bella's videos. You have to check her out. Um, 
If you just joined this on my Instagram live, you can go back and listen to the from the beginning of everything I said. If you're on YouTube, follow me on Instagram because um that's where I go live and I post my Instagram links below. And if you're on Instagram, follow me on YouTube at the Renaissance Amazon, okay? And um, I'm in this video here. Um please feel free to share your comments. You can check out the video I did on Jaguar right back in 2021. I just love to see that my discernment and critical thinking skills are on point. And a lot of these women are really brave because if Cassie was brave, okay, Cassie was brave to have two kids and to come out the way she did. So people always wanna say men are leaders, men are leaders. No, women are leaders. Every good male leader has a female right beside him, okay? right beside him, right behind him, telling him which way to go. Le being a good leader is not a masculine trait. If anything, it's a feminine trait. And we all have masculine and feminine qualities, okay? We all have yin and yang energy, okay? We all have yin and yang energy. But there's a long history in this world of female leaders on every continent, on every continent, okay? So I can get into that in another day. But um, respect to the truth tellers. Respect to the women and the men who've been telling the truth despite people ignoring them and calling them liars. You know, a lot of these people are guilty as... And then you got Ray J who's full of shit in that family, please. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'll do a part two, you know, later. I think I've been talking enough. Have a good day, people. <laughs> Bye.